This is the Partnership for the Arts talk show, where we talk art. Okay, everyone, welcome back to another episode of Partnership for the Arts, where we talk art. I am Dave, your host, and this is a continuation of the artist interviews from the NAE, which, of course, is the National Art Exhibit here at the Visual Arts Center in Punta Gorda, Florida. And we have Mike Foyer and his wife, Deb, joining us. Mike is an artist. His artwork is actually here on display in the exhibit. And we had a chance to grab him yeah. <laughs> <laughs> before the reception starts here tonight. We sat down and talk about his artwork, and we're gonna particularly talk about one that you actually had entered in the show, Cityscape. And we're going to learn all about him, his wife, Deb, that are visiting here in Punta Gorda from out of state uh, for the NAE awards and reception tonight. So we're going to cover all that and uh, some interesting stuff. Not only is this man a brilliant artist, he is also a man, believe it or not, builds robots for a living. We'll cover all that and much more when we come back in just a minute. This is Partnership for the Arts. Come join us as we explore the worlds of art. You can find us on our Facebook page at Partnership for the Arts Group Talk Show. Or you can find us on our new website at pftatalkshow.org. PFTA Talk Show is recorded at the Visual Arts Center in Punta Gorda, Florida. Okay, so we are back and we have Mike Foyer and his wife Deb here sitting with us in the library at the Visual Arts Center in Punta Gorda, Florida as we continue our series of interviews with artists from the NAE, the National Art Exhibit. Mike, Deb, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, now we actually had a chance to meet uh, you had actually just got into Punta Gorda, did you not? That's correct. We, we flew in from New Hampshire. We found our hotel and then took a walk over to the art center and just wanted to check things out and uh, came in and uh, found a lovely space. Yeah, yeah, and you had a chance to go around Punta Gorda. We were talking uh, before the show. You got the chance to check out the Wyvern and FM Dons. Yes. Yeah, yeah, good, good. And good weather for that? Yes, excellent. It's not eight. Blow? Isn't that what you're telling me? It's going to be eight below when we go back to New Hampshire tomorrow. Yeah. And uh, it was 85 and sunny. We went to Sanibel Island and ah. stuck our toes in the sand and then found some shells and uh, things every New Hampshire person should be doing in February. <laughs> well, going to Sanibel, I can't take it personal. We rescheduled the show. It's sad. I understand. <laughs> it's a beautiful place. Of course, you have an entry in the NAE, Cityscape. Is that the name of it? That's correct. Yeah, beautiful work, by the way. Thank you so much. Which has sold. Yes. So congratulations on that. It's very exciting. Uh, just had landed in uh, in Orlando, and I got a call from Jill, and she told me that it sold on, uh, I guess, their special opening uh, uh, reception. So, so obviously, as an artist, that's a very thrilling thing. Right. And who you're referring to when you say Jill, that's Jill Lindsay. She is co-chair of the NAE uh, exhibit this year, which we had a chance to sit down with her, Mary Harbor, when we did the interview with the uh, judge, Don Emerson, last episode. And the event you were referring to was the uh, the VIP special event. I know the uh, the buyers that, that came in and walked around, and it was probably about a minute and a half, and they went straight over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, congratulations on that, too. Thank you so much. My uh... My children are in mourning. They love to the paint as well. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so are they going, Dad, when you paint me another one? Yes. <laughs> there are already orders in. Yeah. <laughs> okay, as I had mentioned on the intro, you don't paint full time. You actually have a whole other career, another job. That's correct. I founded and I run a robotic company in Hampton, New Hampshire, um, Michael R. Robotics. And we're 15 geeks in a room building robots for companies like NASA and Draper Labs and Boeing, and um, that's what we do all day long. And so painting is what I do when I'm not building robots. Wow. It's his wow. getaway, his, yeah. his stress relief. 
stress relief. A long, long time ago, I was supposed to be Picasso, and uh, my parents weren't terribly thrilled with the idea of a painter in the family, and so <laughs> my... I... Hey, don't you go get a real job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My mom um, signed me up for tech school while I was uh, Your mom signed you up? I was up, I was unloading trucks for the Where summer to go to uh, Rhode Island School of Design. And I got a notice in the mail that said I was accepted to the New Hampshire Vocational Tech School. And, and I was like, don't you have to apply to a school? <laughs> and my mother said, you know, if you, go to, if you go to the tech school and you don't like it after a year, then um, you know, we'll pay for you to go to art school. Well, she was smarter than me, and um, they paid me a lot more in summer work than I ever got paid being an artist. <laughs> artist. And, so, and then we got jobs, and life happened. But um, you know, I've pretty much been doing fine art my whole life when I'm not doing engineering. And I understand there was a, another benefit to going to that tech school. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you want to elaborate on that? She was one of three girls in the tech school. My mother signed me up, kind of signed me up. Wow, <laughs> meant to be. Except to I, be. I had to take the test to get in though. <laughs> I just got it. skipped it somehow. <laughs> and you know, obviously, mechanical engineering has been very good to me, so we, we've done fine. And then, you know, like I said, especially as our kids grew and stuff like that, I've always done fine art, and whether it be pastels or oils or watercolors or acrylics, is, it's been a continuous part of my life. Is that a studio at home? It is. Um, actually, uh, the kids are gone, and so the downstairs area where the children's bedrooms are, and there's a living space, has been converted into my big, large studio. <laughs> the art cave. The art the cave. Art cave. <laughs> and I, uh, I, I essentially watch you know, usually pro sports and paint at the same time. Or, Interesting. Or have, you know, I might have classical music on, or I might have, you know, I might have a podcast playing. Right. Well, you know, podcasts, especially about art, is always good to listen to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, Mike, I, I couldn't resist. Please, continue. I drowned myself in sound, and lose a couple of days. <laughs> lose a couple of days, I understand. <laughs> but I got to say, out of all the interviews, I think that's the first one I heard to said I've got the sports going at the same time I'm painting. It's usually music. Yeah, well, it depends. You know, it's funny. Um, during, you know, Red Sox, the patter of the Red Sox in the background for 162 games is perfect for painting because you don't pay attention until something interesting happens. <laughs> And then I can stop and pay attention, and then I can go back to what I'm doing. <laughs> and um, and so, football is somewhat distracting because it requires too much attention paying, and I don't paint as much. Although the painting that is in here right now is in fact a football painting. <laughs> is it really? It is in fact a football painting. Okay, so that was actually going to be my next question. <laughs> 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 Which category did that come out of? Well, you know, it's kind of funny, and I think we discussed it um, previously, is in this particular painting, I was doing an experiment. Right. And, and what I wanted to do was I had been studying some of the people who were doing really wonderful cityscapes, and when I was looking at their paintings and such, they were talking about the various materials. And what I wanted to do was a painting where I didn't use a paintbrush. And so my tools were, I, had, I was allowed a painting knife, cloth, Lino rollers, squeegees, fingers, various other items, whatever I had to have, I could throw paint at it. I could, but I wasn't allowed to pick up the brush as my crutch. And that was how the painting got started. It was really just a, let's see what happens. And then, of course, as you start to get into the painting and you're, you're getting a little farther along and farther along. And, and the city is actually kind of Frankenstein from several different cities that I was putting things together like I like this car and I like these buildings and and so then I kind of put it together and as it starts to come to light as I start to see it now it's like okay now I have to get serious about it and I have to pay attention. <laughs> right because now you're committed. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know and you know you know 
God bless Sundays, because from 1 o'clock until midnight, <laughs> there's football on it, so you can have a long time. To, and then Monday night football the time after to do whatever fixing you need to do. And so I, I, had, I had quite a bit of time to put into Cityscape. <laughs> So it, it's not one game you finish this with? No, this is probably about two or three games worth of effort. And, and actually, I also paint on Thursday nights, and uh, there's Thursday night football, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so it was, probably, it was probably a Sunday, a Monday, a Thursday, and another Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> not many artists can say, it was these days I did this creation. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I just, well, you know, it, what's, what's interesting about my, my weekly routines is that usually I'm working out when I'm going to paint on those days on the other days. Okay. In other words, and so, you know, if I, as a person, as a, with a very technical job, usually what happens is when I get out of work is if I just don't do artwork, then I never turn off. I'm always I gotcha. I'm working on whatever task we've got. And so whether I pick up my sketch pad and, and work on some compositions or the next painting or whatever, that's really how I stop doing robots. And gotcha. That, and so that's, that's really the art pattern as we have now. Now, before when our kids were at home, is obviously the kids' lives were what turned you off from doing robots. But, you know, now that we're empty nesters is... I use art. <laughs> no, that's great. And the reason I mention that is because, you know, I, I do the docent tours. I, I do give tours of the exhibits here. And I get people's feedback. And I found this particular instance with this painting we're talking about is the fact that they were asking, where did he get his training? Mm. That's, a, that's a great compliment. Yeah, but again, still self-taught. So I, I find that interesting. I. I told them that, uh, as far as I know, he, he was actually self-taught, and I actually had one lady went, oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's fabulous. I, yeah, um, you know, it was, my, uh, it was my great wish as a youngster to be taught by, uh, by actual teachers, but, uh, but we, we didn't head that way. And, but like Deb says, is that I'm usually reading a book, following a painting, whether it be looking things up online, is it usually... Like in this case, I was I was studying cityscape artists. Is I will usually pick five or six cityscape artists. Mm -hmm. Is what I did here, and I looked through all of their paintings, and then I will check on YouTube to see if they have any particular techniques, and uh, we'll listen to podcasts where they'll give interviews and talk about what they do, and then I'll try. You and mean like this one? <laughs> done is I'll actually say okay this particular night is going to be that painting and I'll sketch out what I wanted to do and then sit down and organize it and give it a try and some things are successful and some things take me a couple of tries um, my my previous thing is I was actually painting chiaroscuro uh, Renaissance painting was was actually the last couple of months is what I've been doing is oh. copying Carav Caravaggio's and Rembrandt's Okay, okay, so more into the classic master then. Yeah, and, uh, and, and, and then I'll go into Cubism and do Picasso's. And, yeah. Well, and we have a couple of my favorites hanging on the wall in the living room, is the girl with the pearl earring and a Van Gogh starry night. What was really interesting when I was doing the painting was getting the consistency. <laughs> Sorry, Mike, to interrupt you, but Mike needs to come close to the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that sounds better. Continue. The, um, I was getting the consistency to what I needed. In other words, what was interesting was the, the thickness and um, the viscosity of, of his colors and stuff like that, and getting them to be just right so that you get the buttery thickness yes. that you get from mm -hmm. Van Gogh. And, and before I got to the point where I did that painting, I had to do quite a bit of practice to get that paint just so that it was just so because you know he obviously makes his own paints and he mm -hmm. makes them at a time before you know you could just go buy a tube right okay and so what he what he constructed and what he did was very different than the paints that you find today and so it was, it was really interesting to actually get to that 
point. point before you could start. And mm. you know, and similar when I did Rembrandt, is you have to you have to work on figuring out how to get the, the level of thickness that he gets, especially in his finishing, because you know you, you start thin and you end thick. And, yep. And and so the, those are the interesting things to me. And then if I learn those, then I'll actually spend some time and do some original paintings where I do some different compositions in particular styles. Um, and you know, if I'm doing commission work, a lot of people will pay you to paint loved ones or animals and mm -hmm. stuff like that, mm -hmm. is I usually can pick from those particular styles. I also paint quite a bit in the Cubist style of a, of a Picasso. Those are probably my more personal artworks. Okay, all right. Well, Mike, hold on there just one minute. We are going to take a break and we'll be right back. Hi, my name is George Mancini and I listen to Partnership for the Arts and it is a rewarding experience. Okay, we are back from taking that break, and we want to make sure we thank George Mancini. George Mancini, uh, you've heard him on the show. He is a world-renowned jazz performer. He now resides here in Punta Gorda. So, George, we had you on the show. We thank you for that plug. Now, we are sitting here with Mike Fortier and his wife, Deb. I got the name right? Yes. <laughs> okay, there we go. Now, Mike, we were talking about the artwork you do and, and the experiments you do before we took break. So I have a question for you. Do you have a standard of approaching something when you're going to paint, or is there different techniques you found that work successful for doing different things, like, say, if you're doing a portrait versus a landscape? Well, I, I have some standard approaches. and uh, Generally, I'll start with, like, two or three-inch square sketches mm -hmm. uh, in pencil. And then it may turn into something a little bit larger. Usually I will spend a little bit of time on my palette and mix my colors beforehand and actually try the colors to make sure that my colors are right. And that's probably with 100% of what I do. Okay. Okay. If I'm paying attention to a portrait, okay, then there's a different set of tools and colors that I'm looking for. Of course. Then like the cityscape. The, mm -hmm. ci the cityscape is, is essentially a study in gray, okay, which we, we bring color into at the end. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I can get the depth of field throughout the painting. And then after the painting works, then I actually bring the color into it. Whereas when I'm doing like a portrait, I'm really doing it more like um, you know, using the earth tones and stuff like that, and you're 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 mixing. You're you're trying to find the mid tone, mm -hmm. okay, and working from the mid tone, you know, back to the dark and out to the light. Mm, okay, all right, and of course, yeah, because you have whole different things. You have skin tones that you're working with yes. and everything else on on the palette. Yeah. Okay. So, how long have you actually been doing commission work? I, you know, I've had commission work really straight on through my adulthood for, for various pieces but really most of the work been probably for the last 10 years um, since the kids have been gone 10 years I've taken on consistent work you know before that you're raising your kids and you're doing what you so I probably do one or two commissions a year mm -hmm. but now it's it's more than that okay well we are about running out of time and and Y'all, if you hear that noise in the background, that's because the reception is starting to crank up. So uh, you hear them out there starting to have a party without us. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, do you have a website or a Facebook or anything else that people can see your artwork on? I do. Um, I'm active on both Facebook okay. and, um, and Instagram. And so you can certainly see my art um, on, on both of those. I also have a FASO website, and it's Center 555. Okay. Um, that you can find me there. And, you know, obviously can be reached at any of those sites and will answer questions. And Cityscape can be found um, on all three. I can be found. Okay. Well, we'll get that contact info and those links, and then we'll, when we do the show, we'll put the uh, contacts and the links there for you. Perfect. So, yeah. So, okay. Well, it sounds like things are starting to crank up out there. I don't want to hold you from the uh, ceremony. So again, Mike, thank you. And Deb, thank you for coming on the show. 
thank you so much. Yeah. It's been my pleasure. Well, it's it's been our pleasure. It's it's great getting a chance to actually talk with you all and, and meeting you the other day. And I'm just going to make one other note. Uh, Jenny, you, you heard it from Mike himself that uh, he is self-taught. You know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> so this ends another special episode of Partnership for the Arts where we talk art. You two ready to go get some good food? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go.